Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another macro struggle. Today we are going to be talking about the setup for the neoclassical growth model, also called the Ramsey growth model, also called the Ramsey Cast Kuzman model. What we're going to do today is we are just basically going to set up that world. So we'll spend some time talking about the setup of the neoclassical growth model world. We're going to talk about how savings is going to become investment. And instead of doing endowments like we've done in some previous videos, we're going to have a production function. Because we're going to have a production function, that means we're going to have a firm, which means we're going to have the firm problem now in the neoclassical growth model. And then we'll wrap up the description of that world with the definition of the competitive equilibrium in the neoclassical growth model. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and start talking about this new world, this neoclassical growth model world. So what is the mental picture of this world? Well, we're gonna have one representative agent and that's going to be, no surprise, our man, Bill. And Bill is still going to live forever. He still knows everything, just like we've seen in previous models. We're gonna say that he owns his own firm. So he's his own business owner. He owns his own labor and he owns the coconut trees or the capital from the production function. What does Bill like to do? Well, he still likes to eat coconuts, just like we've seen before. But now we're going to add something else as well. We're going to say that he likes sitting at home. We're going to say that Bill, you know, works because he needs income, but really he'd rather be sitting on his couch, maybe making YouTube videos, maybe playing video games, but whatever he's doing, he likes to sit at home. We're also going to say that Bill is endowed with some unit of labor, and that's going to be one. So that's like full-time work. That way we don't have to deal with, oh, is full-time like eight hours? Is it like 2,000 hours a year? We're just going to say that Bill has one period in which he can either sit on the couch or work in each day. Now for investing, notice we don't have savings in this model. The only way for Bill to take some wealth that he gets today and turn it into wealth tomorrow is to invest in himself. What does he invest in specifically? Well, he owns the coconut trees. So Bill can take some of those coconuts, he can plant them, and those coconuts will become coconut trees tomorrow. That act of planting coconuts for more coconut trees tomorrow is what we call investment. So Bill now has investment, but doesn't have savings. Let's talk about Bill's firm. Even though Bill's firm is owned by Bill, we're going to pretend that when Bill walks into the factory, he puts on a different hat. He puts on his firm boss hat which means that now he's not thinking about utility maximization. He's only thinking about profit maximization when he's working for his own firm. Now we know that Bill's firm likes profit because we assume that firms are profit maximizing. How are they going to make stuff? Well, they need to have labor and capital where the labor is Bill and the capital is Bill's coconut trees. So that's what they are going to hire slash rent. What is the firm going to pay for those inputs? Well, it's going to pay a wage W for Bill's labor, and it's going to pay a rental rate or R. Basically, it's going to pay a rental rate R to be able to pick or use the coconut trees that Bill is letting the firm use. So we're going to have a production function that takes coconut trees and turns them into coconuts as well as labor. We're going to have a decrease in returns to scale function. And we are going to say that the production function is going to say that coconuts is some productivity factor A times labor times capital, where we have alpha and beta. And because we're decreasing returns to scale, remember that this means that alpha plus beta is less than one. So here is our setup. Now let's keep going. Sometimes I like to have a more graphical depiction of what's going on rather than just a bunch of words. So here's my nice graphical picture. Let's start over here with Bill. Bill likes leisure. That's something that Bill can give himself. Bill has labor and capital that he rents to Bill's firm. Bill's firm then turns around and pays for those inputs, pays wage and the rental rate. It also is going to give Bill the profit. That's akin to if you own your own coffee shop, at the end of the day, whatever you have left over in the cash register, you take home with you because you own that business. Now for the coconut trees, I just wanna make this also a little more clear. If Bill lets the firm use all his capital, which he will, all his coconut trees, some of those coconut trees will die after they've been picked. We call that depreciation. So one minus the depreciation comes back to Bill. How can Bill replenish the number of coconut trees he has? Well, he can throw some investment or plant some coconuts today. Let's go ahead now and define a neoclassical growth model equilibrium. So it's an allocation. What does Bill get to pick? Well, he gets to pick his consumption. He gets to pick his labor that he gives to the firm, how much of his time he works. He picks his investment today and he also picks his capital tomorrow. What are the prices in this economy? Well, it's just the wage and the real interest rate. Notice that everything's real. Prices are all in coconuts. So the real wage and the real rental rate is number of coconuts. There are no prices. There is no money in this economy. What do this allocation and these prices solve? Well, first they solve Bill's utility maximization problem where Bill is choosing those same aspects that we saw before. 
and we have this infinite time horizon utility maximization problem. Notice that we have his time constraint. So in every day, he can either work or sit on the couch. We have his budget constraint. Notice that profit is entering into this budget constraint because if Bill's firm makes some positive profit, then Bill gets to use that profit in order to buy coconuts or have coconuts because everything is in terms of coconuts. So that's just some extra coconuts that his firm makes that he didn't get paid from his labor or his capital. We also have this constraint right here. And all this says is that how do I know how much I want to invest? Well, I need to find out how much I want tomorrow. Okay, this is how much I start with today, but I don't have that amount today. I have less because I have some depreciation. How much depreciation? This much depreciation. So those are the three constraints. We also need to solve Bill's firm's profit maximization problem. So here's the profit maximization problem on an infinite horizon where this time discount is the same as we've seen before. Notice that this is labor demanded and capital demanded labor demanded and capital demanded, whereas Bill is supplying labor. So up here, really, this should be a nice little labor supplied. This is a labor supplied, and this is a capital supply. Now, we also need to ensure market clearing in this economy, just like we've seen in previous models. We need to make sure that labor demand equals labor supplied, that capital demanded equals capital supplied, and whatever Bill chooses to eat or invest, that needs to be exactly equal to the number of coconuts we produce today. So this is the goods market clearing condition. So hopefully this makes a little more sense in terms of the setup of the neoclassical growth model. If it did, make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.